Hello everyone, welcome to Book of Dawn IOTH Academy. I'm Tormented by Gnomes, I'll be your Game Master today. Joining me, we've got our fantastic adventuring party consisting of Crowen, Leg Day, Lemon Kiwi, and Necra. Crowen, what's going on with you? Uh, not too much. Uh, you know, just uh, D&D, which is my favorite part of the week, honestly. It's a highlight, so good to be back. Likewise. <laughs> Leg Day, how are things? You have a good stream? Yeah, it was pretty good. Right now, my calves really bloody hurt. Cause it turns out if you don't work them out properly for about six months and then go hard, that they will have a little bit of a protest about that. So uh, did you just get goblet squatted on? Uh, I got goblet squatted on twice. So thank you, chat. <laughs> Very cool. Big Gobbo sends his regards. Lemon, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Um, day off. My rap is good. You see me munching. It's much business but we're good <laughs> uh, i'm ready to frag a boss today let's not go. my party because uh, people keep coming to my chat and like oh you didn't frag crone's character happy for you <laughs> it's a happy first you know. love that for you <laughs> happy no <know. laughs> uh and uh last but not least necra how are you doing today i am good I am currently healing up from some uh, mouth injuries, so if you guys hear me lisping and slurring, apologies, uh, but it hurts to talk, so we love D&D &D too much to push the pain away. <laughs> <laughs> I had that offer. Oh, you know what? Let's move this over here. There we go. All right, so if you are new here, Book of Dawn Ioth Academy is our D&D &D campaign set at a magic school in the world of Anakra. Yeah, that act of God worked. We've already got some going through. It wow. is. It features the adventures of our heroes who are young students. Right now they're 14 or 15. They're in their fifth year at Ioth Academy, the greatest institute of magical learning in the four kingdoms. Over the course of the years, their school has been attacked by gods. They have dealt with mysteries. They may or may not have killed a hag or two. Uh, and they've gone to prom. They've done their tests all the ins and outs of life at school, plus living in a world filled with gods and demons that are haunting them all the time. Uh, it, it's been quite the adventure. This is our 50th episode. We are happy to have you. Ooh. When last we left our heroes, they were in a secret vault underneath their home, Tarselmore Hall, which is the chapter house where they live with a bunch of their friends. They take their classes, so on and so forth. Tarselmore, who established that house, is a wizard who was at the academy years ago and vanished under mysterious circumstances. He was secretive. He did a lot of experiments that he didn't tell anyone about. And our heroes, our young heroes, discovered his vault earlier. And it was full of evil magic and forbidden secrets. They did some exploring. They found some demons down there. Now they've returned with some of the most powerful teachers and warriors at the academy because they've learned that Tarselmore, the old wizard, is... Well, he's not alive, but he's also not dead. His spirit lives on down here, and as a servant of the infernal Zethius, he's incredibly dangerous. They went down here with all these wardens and these teachers in order to find Tarselmore and take him out before it's too late, but they've run into some trouble along the way. If you are new here, there's a few different ways that you can interact with the stream to mess things up or give our heroes a boon. You're collecting sand, which is our channel points, just by being here in chat. You'll get more for a follow, for being active in chat, etc. You can spend that to give our heroes inspiration, disadvantage, treasure, and more buffs. We also have stream loots in play. You're going to see cards pop up from time to time as members of our community plays these, play these different stream loots cards. They can give our heroes advantages or disadvantages, and they also invoke the power of the gods of Anakra, who might intervene in one way or another. An act of God can also be triggered when we hit a certain level of subscribers or of stream loot card purchases. Speaking of which, here's what they look like. Behold, an act of God. Good. Hunting horns, strength to the predators, woe to the prey. So, if I recall correctly, uh, whoever is on the hunt gains a use of the hunter's mark spell. Now, technically, even though this scroll mummy, Tarselmore, just emerged to kill all of you. You're the ones here hunting him. So the party now gets, once you can choose to invoke, as a bonus action, you can put a hunter's mark on an enemy of your choice to give you more damage against them. All right. I think that's it. We're about ready to return to the vault. Does anybody have 
any questions before we proceed? In the party. Feel free to go go off and chat, but yeah, in the party. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm good. All right. I'm ready to die. Let us return. Oh, no. to... not that energy. <laughs> Shut up. Let us return to Tarselmore's vault. <laughs> also, each of our heroes... No, the party has three lucky dice in a pool. Luck is on your side, thanks to another stream lose card that was played. So, you have a pool of three lucky dice you can choose to spend at will. Athalor, it's your turn. As you... Master Elnel, Master Rednop, Garnet, and a group of wardens explore the forbidden library of Tarselmore. You know that to the north there's some sort of a dark chapel filled with the undead and a sinister figure presiding over the altar. Garnet snuck her imp in there to spy on them, and she believes that the figure that they're all worshipping or is leading them might be Tarselmore himself. However, moments ago, you just heard an enormous boom resounding from the opposite side of the chamber far to the west where your friends are. It is your turn. What do you do? It's a good job that I uh, generated that telepathic limp with Ariana when I could see her. True. <laughs> That's true. That's true. The two of you are in contact. I invoke for Link. Uh, are, are you guys all right? We just heard a huge bang. Um, I, 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 I'm okay. I have no idea if the other, others are okay. I, I think we're fighting Darcel more, though. That... The that Tarsal? will be Tarsal more. Uh, uh, <laughs> Athelor kind of cuts on the broadly. Ariana says they're fighting Tarsal more in the other chamber. Do we know what Tarsal more looks like? Uh, off of notes. At this or... point, extremely dead. You have a physical description of him. He's got all these statues of himself wearing the skull <laughs> mask all over the place. Uh, but if he is undead, then he probably doesn't look like that anymore. I figure he's a mummy. Like I, I, this is like Ariana just kind of going for the the very basic connections that she makes in her brain, which is like, ah, Tarsimor is dead, but he's like not dead. Well, that thing kind of looks dead, but also not dead. So that's probably Tarsimor. <laughs> like, yeah, that's how that works, right? Quick maths. Quick maths. Yeah, Athel also about to be entire group, like mm -hmm. Elnau, Garnet, Rednop, etc. Okay. Everybody looks to you, looks to the west where they just heard that enormous boom. It is still your turn. I thought kind of just like chest heaves quite a bit, looking over at Red Knot, El Now, Garnet, and then uh, I use the dash action. Okay, and you bolt across the room back into the chamber with the, the Well of Souls, basically. Is that it for uh, our young student here? That is it for Athelor. Okay. Next up, the Wardens of the Academy. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make them controllable by all players. Oh, yay. So that Sick. way, you can control them. So it's not just me sitting here fighting myself. <laughs> Action figures. Exactly. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start moving all of these ones here. They're going to dash following suit effectively. And then there oh, are they're all leaving. Yeah, they're all well, two of them are leaving. Because they did hear about the threat that you reported. Two of them are going to take up defensive positions here and here because they know there's more hostiles to the north. Meanwhile, in the other chamber, a massive blast of thunder just emanated through the halls. I'm going to decide what the wardens do. But if you could all double shift, double click on one of them, you'll be able to make the rolls. And we're going to go in order. So this warden right here is going to be the first one to face the foe who stands before them. I didn't know which one you pinged. Uh, out. Oh, shit. Oh, cool. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just dragged everyone over there. Okay. As oh, a bonus God, action. Fucked. As a bonus action, the warden uses warden's grasp. Until the beginning of the Warden's next turn, the Warden cannot move, and nobody within five feet of them, of his choice, can leave unless they first take the disengage action. So effectively, he's locked this creature in place. And then, I think we're going to do two attacks. 
So let's start with Crowen because you're first alphabetically. Can, yeah. The warden has a flail. Can you go ahead and roll twice with that flail? All right. A 21. That's a good hit. And eight. An eight. The eight is not going to cut it, but the first strike is a magical attack. It deals five points of bludgeoning damage to the creature in the hall. Given that the other wardens can't reach, I think this one who's most in, least injured is going to come up behind the now completely destroyed harpsichord because this creature covered in magic scrolls unleashed a blast of thunder that blew up everything in the chamber. And we are going to... <laughs> hold on, hold on. I got, I got something funny. All right, let's, let's see if we can pull this off. No, we can't quite pull it off. We can't quite pull it off. All right. So we're just going to move up there, and we are going to use fairy fire to place glowing lights around the creature so that it can't, be, it can't evade, and anybody who uh, hits it is going to have advantage on their attacks. Just target indication. And it works. Now the scroll mummy is emanating an eerie light. And can I set the light color to hot pink? Yes, I can. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> yes, queen. Yes. You're looking uh, phase F today. <laughs> the other two wardens are going to take up positions next to Mason and next to Ariana taking up defensive positions to protect you. I think that'll be it for them. And now, Chad Chattius, captain <clears throat> of the Wardens, most brave and heroic member of their sacred order, is coming in. Uh, unfortunately for everyone in the room, Chad Chattius is actually Cryus, <laughs> one of your fellow students, in disguise. And, uh... He doesn't really have a great shot at the moment, but he does have magic missiles. So he's just going to go ahead and move 10 feet here, cast magic missile at the darkness. Bolts of arcane light fly directly towards the creature. And... Yeah, it just works. It just works. So he's just going to spam... Awesome doesn't have shield. Weird, right? What a noob. <laughs> what a noob. <laughs> he says not having shield. Wait, any shielders? <laughs> any I don't shielders in the chat? Either. All right, three magic what? missiles go flying forth. No! For Perfect 15 rolls? points of force damage, we take those. Maximum damage. Dude, Chad, 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 Chad rolls. Chadius is going to seize the other warden standing there and just kind of stands there with his shield that doesn't actually exist, acting like he's, he's guarding. <laughs> Ariana, it's your turn, followed by Master Elnau, Master Rednop, Tarslamore, and then Garnet. Ariana, what would you like to do? So I'm behind the Academy Wardens right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two of them. Okay. Well, I think what I'm going to do is... I will do... Uno Mas of the Scorching Ray... Okay, that creature has cover against you because there's a warden standing in the way. Ah, uh, so there's also a piano in the way, isn't there? Wasn't the the piano's of kind of wrecked. The piano's kind of annihilated. All cover does in this case oh. is adds plus two to Tarselmore's armor class. Hmm. So it's Even still possible. Place. What was that? Okay. I was just wondering if him being stuck in place had anything to... It has like... no in-game effect. He's not under the restrained condition. Ah. His speed is just zero. Okay. Is well, what I want to do different. is... If you will allow it, mm -hmm. I would like... You love to hear that. To... <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> could I, in any way, use the carpet strings to like the reds of the carpet to use snare Ooh. and snare tarsal more 
Okay, so the snare spell has a casting time of one minute. one minute. For a point of inspiration, I would allow that. What if I take my turn and the rest of the cycle of turns to cast the spell? That's ten rounds. One minute is ten rounds. So. Oh my. Yeah. So for a point okay. of inspiration, yes. Otherwise, come up with something else. Uh. I, my, my level of spell slots are so precious. <laughs> I can't Correct. do that. Um, I instead am going to throw some firebolts. In All right. Direction. Firebolt. You should have it under your attacks on your character sheet. If you do have it there on the middle tab of your character sheet, go ahead and click it there. There we go. Now we're talking. A nine. So, so that, yeah. Do you want to throw anything at that? Do you have advantage because of fairy fun? You do have advantage because of fairy fire. He's <laughs> lit up like a Christmas tree. Your honor. <laughs> your, Objection. your honor, I plead. <laughs> I plead the assification. Wow. wow. That That's better. really tragic. <laughs> All right. Well, and GG. <laughs> uh, your honor, the defense rests. Uh, yes, she, Is there yes, she does. Anything else you want to do, Ariana? No, I think I would just like maybe send an update over to the other side and just go hey fairy fire over here come in prepared with some fire spells that might be really good he's also made of paper paper i don't paper. have fire use fire spells i don't have fire <laughs> <laughs> all right that is it for ariana el now looks at red Knop and gestures for him to go assist. She turns to Garnet and says, what did you see in there? Uh, looks at Una and gets whatever description they might remember. The dead lie in worship. Behold with dead and dead empty tongues. And the figure? Yeah, it stands before the altar, its arms raised. Okay, yeah, besides the standing and the arm part, what? It accepts the prills. Light burns within its eyes. <laughs> Waves hands in the air at El now, like... But he said. But then, did, did Athelor tell us that maybe Tarselmore was on the other side? Yes. Well, we should just hold our ground here. I think they have it more than enough help over there. We don't know if this is Tarsal Moor. I mean, I thought this was Tarsal Moor. Okay. Uh, Master Elno walks forward. Oh, God. <laughs> opens the door. Sup, bitches. Sup, bitches. It's no now time. Puts cock on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's real mommy hours out here. <laughs> Casts fireball. I don't At care how big this room is. I cast fireball. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, she's going to just cast it off into the side. She walks up, opens the door, casts fireball, and then uses her bonus action to close the door. <laughs> she really just dropped a nuke deuce in there. <laughs> uh, Garnet, do me a favor and roll 8d6, please. Oh my 28 hour. points of fire damage, and we're going to burn a level 3 spell slot. All right, so all the skeletons just die. They just immediately die. As for the... Do you have resistance? Do you have anything? Do you have anything that can help? No? All right. Well, you know, it happens. Oh. A natural 20. <gasps> okay. The... uh. Inhabitant of this room rolls initiative. Ah, uh, you. <laughs> and unfortunately, won't be able to get. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good, but uh, you know, next round. All Very right. 14, so. <laughs> so, and then El now closes the door and just sort of waits for a moment. She would check her watch if she had one. <laughs> Master that Red done cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I like my skeletons rare. <laughs> exactly. Char, char bone broiled. Rednop is going to skadoodle all the way across at maximum dwarf, ember dwarf speed. 
Now, before Tarsalmore takes his turn, the party has multiple healing boosts on the table. You have a greater healing boost for 44 plus 4. You have another one of those. And you have a, uh, a 2d4 plus 2, I believe. Can I have a tiny one? I'm missing 7 HP, which is a lot for me. <laughs> Fine. Actually, you have, you have uh, two 44 and one 8d4. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a tiny one in the books at the moment. Oh, Who good. wants it? Uh, well, I think 7 HP is probably not going to fuck with 44. <laughs> you want, you want to hold him? Probably live, I'll probably leave that for now. Is anyone else damaged? Yeah. Oh, oh wait, I remember. <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, we're not oh. doing a lot over here. On my turn, because I remember I tried to do this at the end of last episode. Uh -huh. I have a healing potion that I wanted to give to Mason. Okay, you can pass that over. He'll uh, use a bonus action over. to use it on his turn. But you also have those three healing boosts if you want to. And no pushover has been played. All enemies have extra hit points. Oh, I see the cruel DM has oh, turned up. <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Can I excuse Thomas. you? Okay, well, I guess... I will retroactively give Mason the healing potion so he can use it later. <laughs> I'm going to allow that. <laughs> thank you. Mason's like, thank you, thank you. Are you sure you don't need it? No, no, take it. You, 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 you sure? Look, it? You really? You okay. look like you need it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> wow, hostile. <laughs> All right. And uh, there's another superior healing boost on the table, so y'all have plenty of healing. Mason, did you want to tap one of those 44s? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That would probably be good. 44 plus 4, was it? Yeah, go ahead and heal 44 plus 4, and I'm going to knock that off of... Alright, heal 14, and I'm knocking that off of last time's batch, the last batch. Cool. And let's see here. So that is taken care of. And yeah, it is Tarselmore's turn. Which one of you did it? And he is going to make two spell draining slam attacks against the warden in front of him. Is this guy dead? The warden? Uh oh. I have disadvantage from my first attack because chat do be like that. Yes, for that one! Thank you, chat! <laughs> Holy shit. That looks he like it his wrist on the wow. armor! And I'm gonna burn my inspiration that I got from chat earlier to allow me to make my second attack, even though that first attack is absolutely still missing. Because otherwise it was gonna cost him his second attack. Cool. Spell siphoning slam, and that is absolutely a miss. Ooh. Most unfortunate. Tarsamore is throwing. Oh, <laughs> Garnet, it's your turn. All right. What would you like to do? I'm gonna drop my shadow mommy. Uh, which one? Guardian shade. Okay. And uh, your shadow springs to life before you. And we're gonna. Let uh, L now deal with the consequences of that and start heading that direction. So 30 is here. And then you will, I still have a bonus action. You have a bonus right? action and you can move Noir. Oh, yeah. They're coming with me. Mm -hmm. Just going and on your then, initiative count. Yeah. And then we'll use uh, the free Misty step that I have mm -hmm. to get even closer. Is that anywhere within 30 meters or? 30 feet, I believe, yes. All right, bring in. Get in, Noir, we're going fragging. And Noir can, <laughs> yeah, just dash. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, so are they going, they can dash on this turn? Yeah, they can move and dash on this turn. They're active. Okay, then they will go another 30 feet then. Oh, no, they moved and dashed already. Unless they can't oh. bonus, yeah. I'm just saying you had to burn your bonus action to teleport. Oh, Noir can just use right. the action to dash, you're good. Oh, I am on my way. That's our no. first Ramius act of God. Oh no, chat, why? Chat, please. Return to the earth. Blood must be spilled. Blood must flow. What it does is my day up. That's what it does. 
Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. That, oh, I thought that was for day. Us. Yeah. No. I am an owner of blood. It's a good day. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, okay. Any blooders? Oh, I had a question also before I end my turn. Um, mm -hmm. The unlucky dive like reroll thing is that any roll or is that ability checks only? Any roll. Okay. It's it has very... to be d twenty. Yeah, any d twenty roll. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. All right. Um, Ramius, cupbearer of the gods, is responsible for pouring blood into the veins of new creatures, right? Uh, Ramius is a big aficionado of the cycle, the grand cycle of birth, life, death, and renewal. Ramius does not like the undead. So, when this card gets played, you have a choice. Either the party can regain all hit dice and transfer health between each other at will, or destroy one undead creature. Well, uh, come on. <laughs> I mean, by Tarselmore? Question mark. Do do we do we want to frag? Do we want to frag this dude with the wrath of the son of Erakura? Can can we belay it until my turn? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't say it plays instantaneously. That's fine. All right, and I would, I would like to propose we delay that until I get there. Mm -hmm. All right. Agreed. Ariana, add an inspiration to your character sheet. Okay. Mason, <laughs> it's your turn. What would you like to do? You healed a little bit, right? And you have a healing potion you can drink as a bonus action, and you have more healing boosts waiting in the wings. Yeah, that healing boost, boost is making Mason feel uh, decent for now. Still mm -hmm. clutching the potion. Um, but Tarsmore seems like a big bad threat here and Wardens are tanking. So I, I think uh, Mason will start chilling some magic or and start glowing various runes. And then he kind of like, so seems to grab them and like make copies of themselves and clasps his hand together with the runes and pulls them apart, stretching them into a bow uh, shape where it's like this uh, kind of spectral, ethereal, translucent bow, and he'll cast a bright bow rune. Um, yeah, I'll put that in the chat. And this, the, the Act of God Hunter's Mark, can that just go off, or is that still like a typical Hunter's Mark where it costs a bonus action? Oh, it, it can just go off, that's fine. Okay, yeah, I mean... Would uh would target locked? Mark? Yeah, target locked. I think it makes sense rune. right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bright Barun pulls back, takes the shot. Uh, that fairy shit still on too. Yeah, so yeah. advantage on this. Oh, okay, hunter's mark, totally up there. All of the characters uh, here in the back of their mind, you would be online. 15 to hit a 15 does in fact hit even Ooh. with the defenses in place and that deals radiant damage equal to 1d8 plus your spell casting modifier mm -hmm. 13 damage Bruh! <laughs> please nice. no. and then the hunter's mark as well because that's additional a, a d6 weapon attack mm -hmm. uh yeah or, okay. <laughs> Look, you can't always get everything. Yeah, you know, so that's fine. your bonus action. What else you got? Um. Oh yeah, the first attack still does with bonus action. Oh wow. Okay. So I think. Yeah, we can we can can trip action, huh? So I, I mm -hmm. think like flavor wise, after this like spectral like rune arrow goes flying out of the the bow, a like firebolt like kind of like trails right behind it and is going to uh, firebolt. Uh, also with advantage because well. yeah all right for this one we can click on that 23 to hit yeah that's gonna hit funny fun points. fact you think a, a person made of paper would be vulnerable to fire damage yeah actually immune what oh, completely immune to fire damage that's like <laughs> Created by magic they, oh, they no. saw this one coming they put enchantments on it to protect it from uh from fire. It's a good job you didn't use that scorching race spell, spell slot then. Yeah. <laughs> that is nice. That, that was my last used, second yeah. one. Still value. Used a cantrip mm -hmm. to figure it out. Okay. Cantrip of discovery. Mm -hmm. And Mason, add an inspiration to your character sheet from chat. 
Oh, I've, I have too many now. I have too many. It's time to burn that all. stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, all right. will, I will. Is that it for your turn? Uh, I think, honestly, Mason's a little scared from what happened before, so he's going to, like, duck behind this, like, door. And That's not a bad idea, over. frankly. Nothing wrong yeah. with, with hit-and-run tactics. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. He's like, oh, that hurt. I don't want that to happen again. Uh. <laughs> Athelor, it's your turn. What do you do? Okay. I am going to dash on in. Once again, the dash. And as Athelor arrives... He is going to hurriedly pull a rolled up piece of paper out of his bag as uh, something glows within his sleeve. And uh, if it's okay with the party, I'd like to invoke Ramius. Rami! Go for it. To frag ourselves in undead, or at least All attempt right. to. You're going to write the name of Ramius on the scroll in runes using what is ink? No, no, no. I, 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 I just meant Varamius. How do we trigger Varamius Act of God? Oh, oh you're just going to say his name? Well, like, I, when we have that Act of God, that just... Yeah, yeah you have the Act of the God. Act of I mean, Ramius, <laughs> Ramius is the one who's activating this. Do, do we feel some, some kind of eyes upon us from Ramius? Mm -hmm. Yes. In which case, I won't write it. I'll just, like, whisper it. Okay. Ramius. All of you feel intensely the beating of your hearts, the pulsing of your blood within your veins. As Tarselmore the scroll mummy reaches out again, the ink upon the scroll, the magic scrolls that make up his body starts to change color, turning from all sorts of different scintillating arcane inks into the crimson red of blood. And it leaks across the pages. Each of these scrolls stained, dripping, mulching. The entire mummy collapses as it becomes soggy and just splattered with blood. And it is no more. As it dies, I'd like to use my reaction mm -hmm. to cast Soul Cage from the scroll. <laughs> And I'm going to do that by writing the Ioth runes for seal in 100% soul power from a filled ass quill. <laughs> <laughs> we done did it. Oh boy. Huh. You know, chat apologized for playing that Ramius card and I was like, it's okay, I have contingencies. I'm no longer sure about that. <laughs> Wow, okay. Um, normally, this spell traps the soul inside of a tiny cage, but when you use a scroll, you don't need the material component because the cost is imbued into the scroll itself. So, I still have a tiny silver cage, nonetheless. Oh, right. Well, then, that thing, like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you gave me the scroll in the cage last time I, you were here. <laughs> Ooh, I, foreshadowing, sometimes relatively obvious. Okay, hang on. I got to look something up real quick. <laughs> is there anything here that says that wouldn't work? Oh yeah, two Basif. <laughs> we got a new <laughs> pet! Yay, Arcade oh, Wizard! Okay, so... We have problems. The first problem is that under normal circumstances, this spell only works on humanoids. Mm -hmm. Not the undead. But remind me everything... That you're throwing into this? You're using uh, the scroll. You're using the, the cage. 100% fueled soul magic power of a nat 20 dragging of the Ioth Quill That's through the Well of Souls. Mm. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that would check out. Oh my god. Mm. <sighs> yeah, okay. Uh, the lights go out. And for a moment, as you write these runes using this power and using the ectoplasm of the dead students whose souls Tarsal Moore stole all that time ago to harvest for his own power, you feel the energy of his soul pulling away as if it's withdrawing to a place by an incredibly powerful anchor. Something strong 
roots and calls to Tarselmore's soul. But the power of Ioth's quill and the ectoplasmic energy and the runes which you write pull against that. And even though the cage, there's still this spectral tension as if the cage is caught with a great magnetic force from something else. Nonetheless, the eerie flickering of the ancient Archmage's soul lights up inside the cage. Awesome. One last thing on my turn. There's more. Yeah, there's more. <laughs> Athelwall's gonna reach inside his mind looking at this cage. Can you talk to it? Utilizing this part of the spell. Yes. Yes, you can. You can ask a question and receive a brief telepathic answer, which you understand. And it must uh, answer truthfully. Athelor asks his uncle to start downloading knowledge about the Abyssal Rune Book. <laughs> Talk to me later about it. Ask away. And I'll let him use up to three charges of the, uh, of the six charges the Soul Cage gives. Excellent thinking. Truly my nephew. Well done. What's it like being my bitch? First question. <laughs> I was like, you should have asked. <laughs> Yo, how many L's does your name have? Because I think it's got two now. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. that will end my turn. Yeah, with, uh, it certainly to will. Down in defense mode. <laughs> as well as the next three box. sessions I had planned. <laughs> Rips notes <laughs> while they're ghost by next session. Yeah, if I had a dollar for every time that I'd done this with this party, I would have multiple dollars. Okay, so the Academy Warden turns, just looks at the sopping pile of bloody scrolls in front of it and is just going to take up a defensive position in the doorway. The others are similarly going to establish a perimeter and these two. Over here, we'll continue charging forward. And these two here are just gonna stand guard after Master Elnau nuked the room. Chad Chadius stares, gawking at Athelor for a moment, just back in that direction. Uh, it, for a moment, even though he has the chiseled jaw and fantastic scruff of the Chadius, he, uh, he, he, he just looks like a slack-jawed kid for the moment. He really does deserve hose. My God. <laughs> <laughs> he really do be acquiring wenches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just put, turn the light on there because there's a torch there. Now, meanwhile, the other undead creature who is not dead, who did not get insta-gibbed by freaking Ramius, is going to step up to the door, throw it open. Hmm, who do I want to use for this? Visitors, it has been far too long. Let me share with you our hospitality. And he is going to attack Master Elnel. You shouldn't have done that. I'm on my way back. <laughs> Got it doing the whoop, never fucking mind. X fucking excuse me. <laughs> uh, it casts Hunger of Hadar. And opens a hole to a world that should have been left alone. Behold, an act of God. <laughs> Buggles. Slip inside like, what's going on, guys? Ah, we're down here too. Yeah. <laughs> we're helping. <laughs> I'm participating. All right. So he casts Hunger of Hadar, which opens a 20-foot radius sphere. I'm trying to see if I have the... Yeah, here it is. This will work. 
more. Oh my god, what the? Is that good? That might be good. I'm glad I didn't stay One, in two, there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you cast it right dip. here in order to grab Una, both of the Wardens, and Master El now. What about like, because I think Una would have came with me, but I didn't say it. You so. can bring no, you can bring Una with you. I think that's reasonable. I I don't think that's out of. Uh, Come on, ridiculous. we're going to go save the day. <laughs> All right. I try being reasonable. Hunger of Hadar. Blah, blah, blah. Tendrils open all over the place. And anybody who starts their turn there takes damage. It is, you can hear hideous slurping sounds as you walk around the corner, Garnet. Just, I'm not going to do it. That'd be. Mm. Aww, <laughs> I was waiting. So no slurp? <laughs> <It's a slurp. laughs> Necro, go ahead and mute. <laughs> 20 foot sphere slurping? of blackness and bitter cold filled with soft whispers and slurping noises no light can be seen in the area anyone inside the area is blinded there's a warp in the fabric of space so this is now difficult terrain um and if you start your turn there you take cold damage and if you end your turn there you take acid damage so yeah that's complicated yeah, it's a, it's a very complicated area of effect crowd control spell. Ariana, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I really feel like I'm going to be very ineffective in this fight for some reason. Uh, I guess, like, I will move over by... The dining table? Where did he go? Tarsalmore? His balls are in my little box. Oh, I was like, <laughs> he's just not on the map anymore. I can't see the entire map, by the way. So. <laughs> it's because it's dark. Do you have a light source? There was a light source, but it just turned into a pile of soaking, blood-soaked parchment. True. <laughs> I guess, like, yeah, she would move forward. Like, what is going on? Uh... And then maybe just like ask Athor, like, hey, do you have any idea what's going on in the other room? Like, do we need to be concerned about what's going on over there? Are we good here? Garnet said there was some worship happening, but we came after a big explosion. Okay. I'm going to go that way. <laughs> good call. So I guess I'll use my movement to actually go from where I was to like. Athelor kind of half acidly speaks as he just yeah. stares into this freshly caged Tarsalmorian soul. I will start moving in the other direction. Okay. All right. It is Master Elnau's turn. Master Elnau starts her turn within the area of the hunger of Hadar, which means that she automatically suffers 2d6 cold damage. Eight points of cold damage. And she doesn't have any sort of resistance to that, so she's just going to go ahead and enjoy that. She looks disappointed at this creature. Like, I really, really thought I killed you there. That's unlucky. And... Hmm, what would be most effective here? I don't think she wants to burn all of her spells just yet. She's just going to step out of the darkness and hit it with Chill Touch. Does she just nothing personnel, this guy? <laughs> kind of. She hits him for 16 damage. And Chill Touch has a kicker effect where it has disadvantage on its attack rolls against her. And it has to roll a constitution saving throw or lose its focus on the spell. It's an L day. Wait, you got an advantage. No, I mean, mm, it's an L day for gnomes. This is not... Uh, yeah, I'll take the advantage. I'll take that. <laughs> well, would you look at those L's? Unbelievable. <laughs> Un-freaking believable. <laughs> yes, take the advantage. All right, so as it's like all these tentacles appear and it's going... Uh, Elno walks up, charges up her hand with ghostly energy, and just slaps him. His head turns all the way around because he's undead, and then cracks back. Retnop is going to continue running over. 
because he has not received an update to the effect that uh, Tarsimor is solved. He sees Athelor like 30 feet away. Garnet, it's your turn. Actually, Untermuller never did anything. He is in, actually in the initiative order. Um, <laughs> he's going to push forward and start poking the pile of, uh, of goo to see what happened to it. Roll an investigation check. <laughs> Arcana check, and he rolled awfully, but... Garnet, it's your turn. You're making the crossing. You just heard the slurping, and then the slurping stopped. What would you like to do? Do I look behind me? Do I see? No, you don't see anything. <laughs> it happened so fast. It appeared. El now slapped him. It disappeared. So maybe... How much would I have to walk up to start seeing an enemy over here? You'd have to get past, because this bookshelf right here blocks line of sight all the way along. Oh. So from here, you could kind of peek around the corner. Okay, I'll send Una to go do a little peek Okay. Oh. Do I, can, do I get a description of what this guy is? It's just an undead-looking guy? Oh, uh, let me see if I can give you a proper description. Do, do, do. She kind of thought this was Tarselmoor, so who did? Well, he's, he's wielding a staff. He's covered in arcane garb. He's got like an amulet, this little spiky crown, points of blue light in his eyes. He's wielding magic. I mean, it could have been Tarselmoor. Too rotted away to be able to tell in any way, shape, or form, but... Hmm. It's evil Doctor Strange. He's also still alive. Well, he's still undead. Okay. I'm going to walk up. Probably hear like some kind of like oh ouchie from El now, mm -hmm. and you can peek your head around the corner from there and take a pot shot if you want. Okay, I'm done fucking around. I'm gonna use maddening whispers on Ooh. the guy. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that really sucks. It's a charisma saving throw, right? Uh, yeah. As luck would have it, I'm actually kind of good at those. Behold, an act of God. Whim of the waves. An omen appears. Roll a die. Even is bane. Odd is boon. All right. Uh, while we're doing this, I'm going to roll this saving throw. Actually, no. Before we resolve this, go ahead and flip a coin. Roll 1d2, please. I don't like that. Uh, well, you know, we don't always get what we want. Even is bane. Odd is boon. So that is a bane. That is... Uh, that is not good for you. No, on a is that a I was until I rolled the die. <laughs> <laughs> it means that on all of your dice rolls, all your d20 dice rolls, the whole party gets minus 1d4. On all of our dice rolls? All of them? All your d20 dice rolls. The whole party is affected by a Bane effect. How long does it last? The rest of the fight. Ah. Saving throw spells, guys. Uh, All right, but let's see here. Does a 14 save? It does not. As you speak the words of the void, the Academy Wardens wince. Their armor corrodes and rusts just a little bit as the words, you open your mouth and instead of adding noise to the air, you somehow remove it, creating holes in the local sound waves that somehow form into unpronounceable, forbidden syllables. And... The enemy is incapacitated. To continue this effect, you have to use it again on each of your turns. And I will. And it ends as soon as they take damage. Uh, but while they're well, incapacitated, any attack against them is an automatic crit. Are well, all of those usage uses one spell slot? Yeah. Yeah, you Just activate like it, but you have action. to keep chaining it. Ooh, that's like a, like oh, that's Oh, actually, no. It doesn't... Hits against it aren't critical hits. It just can't take actions or reactions. So it is stun locked until you say otherwise. Oh, I thought like incapacitated meant like knocked out, unconscious. No, oddly enough, the incapacitated uh, condition just says you can't take actions or reactions. Oh. Huh. And okay. also this spell reduces its move speed to zero. Okay. I will focus on the spell and warn mm -hmm. everyone to... Uh, or about what this effect is and what they want to do with it. But I, for now, have it in the sunlock until they figure out what they want to do. Okay. The wardens nod at each other and they uh, prepare to approach. We are going to, to beat you to death. 
All right. Mason, enjoy the power of Bane. What would you like to do? Uh, I think first things first, Mason turns to Athlor and it's like, did did you did you just like looking yeah, at would, the little kids? I wouldn't worry about it. Hi, Mason. Wow. Wow. Uh, okay. Good luck with that. Are Thanks. we uh, heading? And then, like, Mason points down the direction of the other the hallway. Yeah. Uh, Master Rono's down there. You'll be okay. I'm going that way. Okay. And maybe tell Master Red not to turn around. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mason starts, uh... Walking this way and getting to redden up in the wardens. So that that way's dealt with. Going back this way. And uh I guess Tred is like is like running and like just, pushes past the ball. He says this. Like, just, uh, just excuse me. Hustling past, running back yeah. and forth in both directions. Alright, alright. Push someone in the pool. <laughs> Athelor, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, Athelor attempts to restow the quill in his sleeve, mm -hmm. still uh, staring at this soul cage, and kind mm -hmm. of looks over to see at what see what Untamal is doing, poking the the soggy mess, and checks in in his head with his uncle. Have you got the information? This entity is a repository of secrets. A major study of the forbidden. Affiliation with the servants. Emphasis on hoarding otherwise inaccessible knowledge. Potentially invaluable. Yeah, but we can't be seen to be taking knowledge from this, so... Ask it three questions, get valuable answers, tell me later. We continue. So Uncle has had two rounds at this point to interrogate the uh, interrogate the spirit of Charleston Moore. Okay, and uh, Athelor tightly closes his fist around the soul cage and runs off after Mason. I'm going to say that hiding the quill was an action, so no dash for me. All right. And off you go. And at that point, something happens the ectoplasmic pools before you begin to bubble and churn agitated as if boiling from below each of the sarcophagi the stone sarcophagi shift and suddenly their lids screech and slide off one by Round one two. skeletons emerge Fight. From each. To fight. <laughs> and you can hear shuddering the wailing of the dead from deeper within the tomb. The bubbling pools before you burst forth with more of those chimeric phantoms, the amalgamations of angry, tormented souls. As they erupt, bursting forth. Uh, give me a moment. I have to wake up a few more skeletons. Got you. Got wait, you. Were, were they bunking in the fucking thing? There's two of us oh. here. We were twins. No, not not in those sarcophagi. In the rest of the dungeon. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. This is that moment in Skyrim where you pick up the item and then all the Draugr activate at the same time. Ah, oh, yes. When, when Hell's entire buggery squadron just comes up like, ah, <laughs> I, I see you got our invite. Let me introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. Okay, yeah, I, have I activated everybody? I have activated everybody. Cool. And I've rolled them in, and I've sorted descending order, and it is the warden's turn. All right. Uh, let's have... Do they have enough movement to reach the targets? And can they actually harm these targets with their maces? They do, they deal magical damage, yeah. All right. So we're going to move this warden right here. And this warden right here. 
and they are both going to attack this Chimeric Phantom. I would like Athalor to roll oh, one of their attacks, and I would like uh, Mason to roll the others. I've got the right one. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Less shit. All right, that yeah. second one is a hit, and they're also going to put the Warden's Mark on it. So it has disadvantage on any attack roll against anybody except the Wardens themselves. All right. For the rest of those attacks, as they bring their enchanted maces to bear, all of those hit except for the nine. So they immediately go into defense mode. And there's no reactions here. But, and they didn't start their turn within 10 feet of it. So we're good. They're just going to go ahead and start beating the crap out of it for 17 points of damage. Let's actually have a battle <laughs> where people can attack. <laughs> so here, here's the thing: I had written in my notes that if Tarslamore goes down, you know, everybody wakes up. I was kind of expecting it to happen a little later, but it still happened. Now, as for the wardens over here by Master Elnow and Garnet, they are going to. Flank it. They did get warned that I have a stun lock and they should be fucking around unless El now tells them to fuck around. They look at El now. El now nods and they yeah, proceed fuck around. To, <laughs> beat, fuck around. <laughs> to beat it to death. I would like Necro to roll two flail attacks and I would like uh, Lemon to roll two flail attacks with these wardens. How do I shift and double shift, click? Shift double click on the token to bring up its character sheet. This could be the one time in history where telling the teachers has actually avoided more bullying. And right? It's a multi attack? Weird. Yeah, well, you just click the flail. Oh, one, two. Oh my god! Oh, she did be rolling, cool. though. Okay, sweet. 17 points of damage. Okay, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Your damage was nuts. Yeah, but you hit both times. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you still dealt more damage somehow. <laughs> And they're going to place their Warden's Mark on it so that it'll be punished for attacking anybody except them. And they're going to use the Tower ability so that it can't move unless it uses its action to disengage. They're basically tanks. The Wardens can cast spells and they tank. Pull aggro, the works. All right, so they are fine with messing with it because they now that they're in position, it's kind of screwed. Skeleton time! They move at 30 feet. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Can he do it? No, he can't. <laughs> yeah, he can kind of do it. Anyways, let me show chat what's going on over here. They're just moving into beat down position. Oh, good. Did I mention I it. that they have bows? Huh. All right. These three are all going to attack this warden right here. Ah, oh, I forgot to inflict those. No, the minus 1d4s are only on you folks. It's not on the wardens. That would just take too long, honestly. <laughs> Alright, the warden takes a whopping five points of damage. Did the resistance AOG, uh, like, carry on from this entire fight? Or is it just for last session? Just last session. I tried, guys. Alright, the <laughs> lord. <laughs> Athelor, this one's gonna run up and try to slash you up. Ooh, Ooh, silence, sound and light fade away. That will be a hit. All right, enjoy seven points of piercing damage. Mmm, piercing. I'm now half HP. Okay. For 10 minutes of game time, the area is blanketed in a silence spell. And we're gonna put it on this room right here. This Well of Souls is under a silence spell, which means any spells with a vocal component cannot be cast if you're standing inside this room. Is there like a, a range like from here to here? Yeah, yeah. If you're standing outside of those marks, you can still cast uh, vocal component spells. <laughs> All right, the other two are gonna fire arrows at Master Redknob. That's a natural 20 for nine points of damage. And the other one misses. 
That is it for these skeletons. However, there are more. There are many more. Um, Ariana, start taking your turn while I move the entire skeleton army to bear. Uh, okay. <laughs> You can hear some uh, approaching down this corridor. Wait, which one? This corridor right here. Oh, oh my god. I think upon hearing those sounds, Ariana would like just uh, telepathically link to Athlor, like, hey, I, I, I think you're probably busy over there. It looks like you're a little busy, uh, but I think we might have more company. Can I respond in the kind of silence telepathically? Yeah, telepathically, absolutely. No sound required. Okay. Yeah, fuck, say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in here. And they're coming towards you too. Maybe Tarzamor falling has woken everything up. I th I think so. I I hear them from like the north, like kind of towards that chamber. Behold, where we an saw the like, or whoever you captured come out from. Um, uh, yeah, do, should I stay here? Should, do you need help? Do, who, who, who needs help? Throw fire at these things. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, Ariana will, like, step forward and try to frag the one that is, uh, closest to Athelor. Ariana, okay. before you do this, roll 1d10. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, no. For the next six rounds, you have resistance to all damage and advantage on all saving throws. Let's go! Whoa! Nice. Yo. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna hey, use that. Thank you. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, so what Ariana is going to do is... Wait, do any of these skeletons, are they holding weapons, like melee weapons at all? Yes, they have swords and they have bows. Okay, if she feels confident, she's actually instead going to walk up to the skeleton in front of her, and mm -hmm. she's going to try to steal the sword. Ooh, okay. Just take it out of his hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> Except you're in the silence, so it's a, it's, you're just... Every time you try to talk in there, someone gets plus one XP. Roll oh. a sleight of hand or athletics check. To go for the yoink. And subtract 1d4. Yeah, no, you did not succeed. Uh, <laughs> your total was a 4, no. and you do not have the sword, and you've used your action and a little bit of movement. What else would you like to do? Okay, well, in an angry fit of frustration... Ariana is going to stomp her foot mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and um, are they, does she know anything about them in terms of like immunities or things that they're like? Um, have you taken any courses on this? And if not, do you have religion proficiency? Um, I don't think well, you've taken. If I can't. If I can't take the sword, can I still use the sword to try to hit the skeleton? <laughs> Just like, why, why you hit yourself? <laughs> okay, roll an opposed athletics check against the skeleton to try to make it hit itself. Okay, well, because I wanted to touch the blade and use green flame blade. And then like, oh. have it hit itself. Nice, nice. Well, I got an eight. Roll an athletics check and subtract 1d4 from it, please. Oh, it can't be that bad. It really is that bad. <laughs> I, you know what? I, can I use an inspiration, please? Yes, you can. You can burn an inspiration. Oh, uh, minus one four. One. You have Wait. a 25% chance of succeeding. Yeah! 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 Oh. All right. <laughs> you hit it with its own sword. Uh, yeah. Roll 1d6 plus two, but I'm going to cut this damage in half because this isn't a very effective way to attack it. Unless you, unless Green Flame Blade is a bonus action. Oh, I don't know. And does it have a, ver a vocal component because you're inside the no-go well, zone? It's just evocation. Dang. But it is instantaneous. Mm -hmm. What's the... Okay. Let's see. Green well, Flame Blade. Well, this is what Blade. it does. 
Oh, it okay. is just somatic and material. It, it no takes verb. an action to cast. Oh. So you used mm -hmm. your action. If Which you I had the weapon or you had your own weapon, you could use it. But at the moment, that is all you have accomplished is you poked it for a little bit of damage. <laughs> well, that's fine. You can I just, move I away like if the, you want, or you can stay in melee. I like the head cannon of just. <laughs> Why are you hitting yourself? Stopping my foot and then just making it hit himself. Uh, I guess I will back up outside of the cone of silence. Is that okay? It when, if you leave, the skeleton will get an attack of opportunity. You know One what? Then I'm just gonna swing. like just sit in its face and stare it down. <laughs> okay, just <laughs> too close alpha. to assert dominance. <laughs> alpha the skeleton. All right. Over on the far side of the chamber, now no sound is passing from one end of the room to the other. No longer bound by the incapacitation spell, the wardens were kind of hoping to instagrib it, you know what I mean? The creature is going to cast invisibility on itself. Do they have any specials? No, they don't. It's going to cast invisibility? And it is going to cheese it invisibly. He's fucking booking it, mate. And as it withdraws deeper and deeper into the chamber, before we turn back to Chad Chadius, we're going to take a brief six minute break. So stay tuned, folks. More Ooh. chaos casters and castles when we return. Don't go no. anywhere. During what? the break, that's a great time to check out our new zine featuring art by wonderful members of the community, as well as literature from some of our excellent writers who are around here as well. The link is in chat. Check it out. It was a wonderful labor of love by our community. What a champion. Thank you for the reminder. Please check out the zine. You can do exc exclamation point zine in chat to pull it up as well. So give that a look to keep yourself occupied for the next six minutes. We'll be right back. Thank you. 